Hey, many fish. It's the 12th of August, 2018. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, my attention has been turned to more immediate things here, so it's harder to get in here and make a video and share it with you guys. It's just uh, the way it is, you know, but things are still happening at breakneck speed, I can tell you that. And I was led uh, during this past week. It was is it was an interesting week. Let's just put it that way, okay? Um, but I had these words in my mind earlier in the week when I woke up one morning, and it was uh, to do with Rome and Egypt and the spoils and captivity. And this these are the words that have been mulling around my head all week long, and uh, I've just been studying and looking into these matters and seeing if I could put together what it was talking about and it led me to several things and I just want to share one aspect of it with you this morning because I feel it's important that these things are basically becoming revealed to us now okay and it has to do with Paul the Apostle uh, soon after Christ's death and resurrection he's preaching in Jerusalem and the Jews now want to kill him okay so he seeks uh, the audience of the governor so that he's not killed he's being falsely accused by the Jews and they lay in wait for him so they send him off to have an audience in front of the governor and the governor is in Caesarea all right now this is just weird how this stuff comes to me but what this is all showing is literally the captivity of Israel by Rome who is Egypt Rome is Egypt that's that's all there is to it modern-day Rome is ancient Egypt only they have kept it all in the dark and most of it is right in front of the world to see but they don't perceive it now the world is beginning to be able to perceive these things praise God and what it led me to was the strangest stuff, Caesarea. It made me look for um, obelisks of all things. I'm led to these obelisks, right? Now, we all know about the Vatican. I mean, they have Rome. Get a load of this. This is crazy, okay? Rome has 13 standing authentic Egyptian obelisks. There are more erect obelisks from Egypt in Rome than anywhere else in the world including Egypt okay Caliglia moved this one up there at, at tremendous cost to get these things here and it's just a symbol of conquest but not by these emperors and men but by Satan this represents the spirit of Satan the spirit of Antichrist these obelisks are a symbolic place marker for Satan to say I have conquered I have triumphed over you and of all places that you would not expect to see obelisks it would be Israel wouldn't you think don't you think that the Israel people would reject Egyptian obelisks in their country uh, seeing how that that was who they were uh, brought out of captivity from I mean this is a big deal and when they left Egypt, when, when the Israelites left Egypt, they left with spoils. Lots of spoils. Look at this. Exodus 3, 2, 2. But every woman shall borrow her neighbor, and her sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and gold and raiment, and ye shall put them on upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. They left Egypt with the spoils, right? And, uh... Exodus 3, 2, 2 of all verses, right? And Paul is taken to Caesarea in Acts 23, 23. This is just crazy stuff, people. And this is the obelisk in Caesarea, Israel. And I'll take you there on the maps because this is crazy. This is a authentic red granite one-piece Egyptian obelisk. And it's erected out here in this field where no one can see it there's no signs there's no pathways there's nothing to this thing let me take you to the uh to the map here because this is just crazy all right i 
mean, what are these Egyptian obelisks doing in Israel? <laughs> That's what I want to know. But anyway, there they are. And I'll bring you to that particular obelisk right now. And this has been there since the time of Christ. This was erected like almost the same exact time as Christ's death and resurrection. And you got to understand how important that is, okay? Caesarea, not Caesarea Philippi, Caesarea. And the area is even shaped like a Roman soldier's helmet right there. Look at that. That's what it looks like. But I digress. This is the main tourist area, which incidentally is being funded by with millions and millions of dollars by the Rothschild Foundation. Nothing happens in Israel without the nod of the Rothschilds, okay? But this obelisk sits here in the middle of this nowhere land. And this line right here goes directly to Jerusalem. And, you know, that's where Paul traveled on his way to Rome, okay? Very, very crucial time here. Um, but in Jerusalem, where this line goes, and I'll, I'll explain why I go to this particular location. And that would be the Garden Tomb. The reason I go there is because that is of the three most important places, at least arguably, uh, in Jerusalem. The Garden Tomb would be the top of the list because that's where it happened. That's where the victory was won. That the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior happened right here that's where it all happened but during jesus's life some of the primary things that we read about happened on the mount of olives as well as mount zion okay and there's a ton of things we can go into here you guys but that line directly and i'm talking exactly from the garden tomb to that obelisk right there which would be this line is exactly 53 miles now First thing that comes into my mind is that is literally a mocking, just making fun of the Jews who can't see. Isaiah 53 tells exactly of when G or how they would be able to tell when Jesus came. But Isaiah 53, who hath believed our report? Okay, I mean, this is just crazy stuff. But for that to be exactly 53 miles from the Garden Tomb to uh, this obelisk is insane. And this obelisk was placed, like I said, right at the time of Jesus' death and resurrection. Quite literally, like 33 years before the Romans sacked Jerusalem and take away the spoils all right this is just crazy stuff this line right here this green line this goes to the other obelisk in israel there's only two and this thing is quite impressive this is this is like a multi-million dollar memorial that they put up here for four egyptian soldiers that's it four egyptian soldiers get this 30 some odd foot tall solid red egyptian granite obelisk built for them and placed in Israel and in all places in Ashdod. Now Ashdod is important because that is where the uh, the Philistines in 1 Samuel 5, <laughs> that's where they take the ark when the Israelites lose it in battle. They take the ark to Ashdod and they place it in front of their god Dagon. And Dagon keeps getting knocked over, and then half the place is smited and killed, and so they sh they get rid of the ark and ship it back to Jerusalem. And ironically, this line right here is exactly parallel east-west. 90 degrees east, 270 degrees west from the Garden Tomb in Jerusalem. Okay? Now, I don't know how to explain all this, but that line right there, okay... Somebody can explain this, I'm sure, but why is that exactly 33.2 miles, okay? And this is right to the obelisk. If we go to the actual point of where the battle was, where that obelisk is supposed to represent, it's literally 33 miles exactly, okay? 
This is where the battle happened, right here. On this bridge. There's a bridge that used to exist here, and that's where the battle occurred. Exactly 33 miles from the Garden Tomb in Jerusalem, at a heading of 270 degrees exactly. There's a reason for that. I don't know what it is. That's why I'm making the video. But I do know in my spirit that this is showing us something. This is Rome, a.k.a. Egypt, proclaiming Israel. That's what it is. And they've been doing it all along in the dark. The Jews who say they're Jews but are not. And these two obelisks encompass the coastline of Israel that goes right through Tel Aviv where the Rothschilds were behind creating the state of Israel back in 48 and they held their little meeting in their independence hall here in Tel Aviv right here and there's an actual connection to the garden tomb from here too see that line right there you can't make this stuff up you guys exactly 33.2 miles precisely the same as this obelisk in the south in Ashdod same exact measurement right there okay 53 33 33 to our obelisks and to our Rothschild Jews who say they're Jews but are aren't and so all I'm telling you is that this is illustrating the spirit of Satan that's been at work in the dark all along being revealed and it's showing me that Israel is going once again they are in captivity they are in captivity by Egypt known as Rome I mean this is the best I can do and there's like millions of connections to this I can't even begin to tell you how many connections there are to this entire thing and just in Jerusalem alone, when we connect the three most important parts in Jesus' life in Jerusalem, this line perfectly dissects through the city of David. Well, the city of David is my contention where the temple actually stood, not on the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount was a, a Roman garrison, a Roman fort. This housed a legion of Roman soldiers, 6,000 men. That's what this was used for. When they're praying at the Western Wall, they're praying at the wall of a Roman fort. That's what they're doing, because the real temple's in the city of David, right down here. This is just crazy stuff, you guys. And for this all to connect to the tomb, to where the victory occurred, shows us that this spiritual war is still raging. And there are a lot of people being fooled right now that just don't see. So, you know, we try to help them see. This is, this is really important in my spirit. And all it really does is say that, you know, you're in a spiritual war that you cannot win without the Savior, without the victory that Jesus brought to the world right here. He did it all. He did it all. And all we need to do is call on his name and believe on him. And he shows us the truth and proves the truth of him. You can't deny this stuff. How in the world did they end up getting these placed in, in Israel? Look at this place. I mean, it's in the times of Israel, for crying out loud. Look at it. It's even topped at the front, at the, at the top of the uh, obelisk. High above on the face of the obelisk is the symbol of Aten, the Egyptian sun god. He was worshipped by Pharaoh Akhenaten. This early version of monotheism has been cited by Freud, we trust him, right, as the source of Hebrew monotheism. Can you, like, wrap your head around that? Ashdod, Israel, where the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines, and then sent back to Jerusalem and right beneath where Christ was crucified is where the ark is that's my firm belief and that's the direct connection right there and it will be revealed as a witness that the world cannot deny but some will some will still deny but that'll be quite a witness when that's broken out huh 
but I wanted to show you guys this stuff. This is just things that I've I've been shown during the week here, and uh, man, I just really just want to visit y'all. I'll link all this stuff. This is absolutely crazy, but it's true. It's real. I mean, you're looking at it. The Vatican, folks. Rome. Look at the title of this article. In St. Peter's Square stands ancient Egypt. That's right. You're looking at it. <laughs> Spirit of Satan right there. Look at that. Right in the middle of the pregnant serpent. <laughs> the erect Osiris phallic. And it's really not anything that the world is told that they are. These are very powerful and they're placed very specifically at certain times. And they're very powerful spiritual weapons of, of Satan's. You know, people need to reject these things. If, if real Jews knew that these things were standing in Israel, don't you think they'd be up there saying, get this thing out of here? We don't want this abomination standing in our in our land. Get rid of this thing. That's what they would say. But they're not. Because it's the Rothschild types that are running the show. I mean, this is just the way it is. And for it to be 53 miles exactly from the Garden Tomb. 33 miles exactly from where they memorialize four soldiers. They built this memorial... For four soldiers, just average, you know, infantry soldiers. They weren't generals or anything. And they drop tens of millions of dollars and build a legitimate one-piece red granite Egyptian obelisk with Aten, the symbol of the sun god on it, in Israel, in Ashdod. And that is recent. That was only in the 70s uh, as a result of the Camp David Accords. Some of you might remember that whole situation. But it's all about Jerusalem, people, and it's all about Jesus. Everything's being revealed, and you need to make a choice. Who will you serve? Okay? It's a very simple choice to make, but you need to make it, because the time's coming where you're not going to have those choices to just freely, willy-nilly make and contemplate. Okay, because things are about to happen in this world that are going to blow your minds. So we can thank the Rothschilds, okay, for all our lovely obelisks that we now have standing in Israel, where they ought not be. So I needed to share that with you guys. Wow, I went a little longer than I thought, um, but I really just want to make sure that I just tell you guys, you know, that Jesus loves you. So seek him, cleave to him, and keep looking up, always. Keep praying up, and definitely be armored up, because the war is here. You need to be ready. Praise God. Seek Jesus. Y'all take care. Peace and grace to you. Many fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God,